Hello friends and welcome to another video. Now today I want to share with you the habits that I am following to improve my sleep. And this is the routine and the mindset that I have incorporated given that I was having insomnia, anxiety, and I was overall feeling tired and sleep deprived all day long. That is why I came across the concept of sleep hygiene, which is basically a set of habits that form a routine that helps you to sleep better and to have a good night's rest, which is something that we all need. So today I want to share with you how we can promote good sleep with some simple daily actions and I will take you through the things that I do before sleeping in a sort of countdown to kind of show you how my routine unfolds. But before we get started, do not forget to hit the little subscribe button and the little bell so that YouTube tells you about the upcoming videos. Now the first big game changer for me was realizing that the preparation for a good night's rest starts many many hours before I actually get into bed. Because before I kind of had the fantasy that each day started from scratch while sleeping. So I was not really paying attention to the actions that led me to bed. And I was doing some things that were disturbing my sleep. So by changing my mentality, I started to be very careful of the actions prior to sleeping. So one of the first things that I recommend you to do is to choose at what time you want to be sleeping and plan your day according to that. So if you want to sleep, let's say at 11 p.m., you have to introduce some habits way before this time. So let me start with a bit of the countdown and the hours prior to sleeping. Now, one of the things that I try to do is to cut off caffeine consumption during the afternoon. And I'm pretty sure that you have heard the recommendation to cut on caffeine since it can keep you awake, but I think that actually not everyone is aware of the amount of hours that your body needs to process caffeine. So basically, coffee blocks adenosine, which is a substance that promotes sleepiness, and caffeine has a half-life of three to five hours, which means that your body needs from three to five hours to just process half of the concentration of the substance. So, taking this into account, having a cup of coffee in the afternoon can be quite detrimental for your sleep. I try not to drink any caffeine, whether that is coffee, mate or tea, after 4 p.m. or any caffeinated drinks for that matter. And as you can see, this starts way, way before I get to sleep, but it is something that is preparating my body to be able to rest. Now, this was a kind of big one for me because even though I do not drink too much coffee on a daily basis, I did drink a lot of mate late in the day, let's say from 6 to 7 p.m. And mate is just a big part of my culture and I was so used to it that it kind of became something difficult for me to let go of. And I had a bit of a craving for the substance, which is called matein, and actually acts in a similar way to caffeine, so it does create a bit of a of a craving pattern and this is by no means perfect and some days I do consume caffeine in some form after 4 p.m. but I make my best to be consistent and stop having it many hours before bed. I have since then noticed a lot of improvement in the time that it takes me to start sleeping. Exercising can be great to sleep better in the night, but you should not do it too late in the day. Preferably two or more hours before the time in which you want to be asleep. For instance, if you want to be asleep by 11, we should stop exercising at 9 or earlier. And you should do this since to be able to sleep, your body temperature has to drop a little bit and exercise actually heats you up. So if possible, try to exercise earlier in the day and this is actually good because you're going to get some light exposure and you know, sunlight and daylight is great to help you regulate your sleep patterns. Now, when it comes to food, I prefer not to eat heavily during dinner and I try to eat as early as possible. This is of course kind of difficult with a family, especially since we are so used to having late dinners in my country. So we usually have dinners around 10 p.m. And that is just too late for me and I would rather have it around eight or nine. But if I do have it later, I try not to eat too much nor too heavy meals. I think that going to bed with a full stomach is not good for your sleep, plus it is not as if you actually need so many calories to be sleeping in the first place. So you know, that is something that I try to be mindful of. 
and since tea does not have a big impact on me i sometimes have a cup after dinner i try not to but i really like to have a cup after dinner some days and i totally allow myself to do that Now another big thing that I changed was to calculate my winding down time and I allocate one hour before bed to do this process. This was a very 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 important thing and a big game changer for me because before I just calculated how many hours I was going to sleep without counting some winding down time in bed that I actually need. So therefore, I was stressing out because I was sleeping a lot less than I intended. Since then, having some winding down time in preparation for my sleep has been my goal. So one thing that you can do is to follow a routine on a daily basis that tells your body and your mind that it's time to sleep. For me, this winding time starts 45 minutes to one hour before I want to actually be asleep. And at this time, I usually write a few lines in my gratitude journal. I slightly organize my room, I put on my pajamas and I go to the bathroom to prepare myself and get myself ready. I try to stop using electronic devices such as my phone and computer earlier in the day, but on some days, the minimum that I can do is to stop using them before this winding down hour begins. It is the no negotiable moment to let go of the screens, which can actually interrupt our circadian rhythm so badly. Ideally, I aim to let go of screens and blue lights before dinner, but sometimes I will listen to a podcast on my phone while washing my face or my teeth, but that's it. No more interactions with the screen or social media beyond this point. 30 minutes before I want to sleep, I hop into bed. No phones or other electronic devices are allowed in my bedroom at this moment, except for my alarm clock, which remains in plain mode. And it's actually an old device that I don't use any longer. And this simple thing has allowed me to sleep better because on days where I take a little bit longer to fall asleep, if my phone is nearby, I am just tempted to go grab it. But since it is outside my room, I am just too lazy to go fetch it and therefore I just don't. I really enjoy grabbing a book at this moment of the day and I have a nice and quiet time reading. So at this point, you can do anything that relaxes you, whether that is listening to music, meditating, or just simply mentally giving thanks for the good things of your day. And I personally really like this last thing because I go to bed with good thoughts and a big smile on my face, feeling a lot of gratitude. And it is also nice to remember at least one good thing that I have accomplished in the day, even if it was really small, because this helps me to think in a much more positive way about myself and not to be so harsh and criticize myself too much. Now here are another important things to take into account. Consistency is key. You should try to wake up and go to bed at the same time every single day as much as possible, including weekends. And I definitely struggle with the weekend part since I love to stay in bed for a bit longer without an alarm, but I'm trying to get my body used to consistent wake sleep schedules, so I also keep an alarm on weekends too. Now, room preparation also starts a long time before I go to sleep. And in the afternoon, since the temperature starts to drop, I like to open a window and let some fresh air to cool down my room. It is quite hot outside, so my room definitely needs some time to cool down after the entire day of heat. I also started to use my air conditioner unit, which I must say that I kind of disliked before, but I realized that it could help me to regulate the room temperature and sleep better. And I am still not a big fan of it, but I cannot deny that it has helped me to improve my sleep a lot. Other things that I make sure to have are no lights, a completely dark room, no noise, or of course, as little as possible, and comfortable sleepwear. I am a light sleeper, so things like light and noises affect me quite a bit and I wish I could be like some people that I know that are not woken up by noises, but unfortunately that is not my case. 
Now let's talk a little bit about stress management and overthinking. I had to address this because it is one of the big reasons that leads me to endless nights of little sleep. So first, as a psychologist, I have to advise you to get professional help if you're feeling uncontrollable levels of anxiety or overthinking. Being able to speak to a professional, have your own space where you can actually go over these things can help you a lot to stop the flow of thoughts in your head. Anyhow, one thing that has been helping me a lot with this is to stop working some hours before bed. Now, since I am now aware of the bedtime preparation hour and of the habits that I have to follow, I don't keep working until right before bed. And this has helped me to control the endless mental to-do list and to get myself distracted from the stress of the everyday. I personally have been enjoying a book or a novel to kind of help me unwind from my personal life and to immerse myself into a story. I try, and this is not always possible, but I try to stop working before dinner. No more things to get done, no more tasks to tackle, no more things to worry about. I will continue to do them tomorrow. Sometimes if I overthink too much in bed, I like to think that there is absolutely nothing that I can do to improve or tackle uncompleted things at that precise moment. And actually, the best thing that I can do is to try to sleep so that I can wake up on the next day and get into completing them. Now, great tools to deal with overthinking and anxiety are meditating and journaling. And I kind of like both of this for different situations. So I prefer to meditate when there is one thought that is kind of repeatedly going through my head and I kind of want to focus on something else. So I allow meditation to kind of guide me and my attention in parts of my body, in different images or sceneries that I picture in my mind. And I like to journal when I have too many thoughts and want them to kind of make sense or I just want to have another perspective into what I'm thinking about. So these are two things that I totally recommend you if you're dealing with stress and overthinking. But remember that a professional can help you out a lot. Okay, my friends, so this has been a very important topic for me. It has been something that I have had a bit of difficulty with. It's not perfect and I'm trying to be consistent because consistency is the key, as said. So yeah, I really hope you could just grab a couple habits that can help you out too. Now, my friends, if you find meaning in my content and you like what I do and you want to support it, you can actually make a very tiny contribution into my tip jar. And with that, you will help me out to keep creating and to come up with more ideas and to be able to dedicate more time to making videos. I'll have the link down below, but you can also click in the card in the right top corner. And also, if you like the channel and you like what you see and you want more videos, you can give this one a like, leave a comment and subscribe. And do not forget to hit the bell if you do so, because if not, YouTube will not tell you about my upcoming videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for daily snippets of my life that I like to share and also some kind of nice reflections that I think throughout the week. And yes, my friends, I really hope to see you next time. So please stay simple.